Kara Goucher for a shorter distance than we saw the women women run at 5,000 meters. This will be seven and a half laps, 3,000 meters. Yeah, this is a distance that isn't run as often, obviously, as the 5,000, but most of these men have run a 3,000 this year. It's a little step down, a little bit different tactics, obviously speedier. It's going to be good. Speaking of speedy, we saw him run one of the fastest miles ever, just off the world record, Jakob Ingebrigtsen. You know, he said yesterday he needed to hydrate, get some nutrition, see how the body feels today. He definitely went for it all yesterday, and he's picked himself back up to come back out here today in the 3,000. See Faye getting introduced here from Ireland, and next to him, the American Grant Fisher needing some momentum going into the offseason. You know, Grant Fisher was injured earlier this year. He didn't make the World Championship team, which was very surprising, but he has put on a great late summer season. I think that he could sneak in an American record depending on how the pacing is and where he falls, but he is quite fit at this point of the year. He does now hold the national record, 728.48. He did that in Monaco last year. As we go down to the inside, Yamaf Kajelcha, world indoor champion at this distance, twice over, 26 years of age. Broke the world indoor record in the mile a couple of years ago. Men's 3,000 getting underway. Another person to keep our eyes on is the man in the T-shirt. Luis Grijal, the fourth at the World Championships in the 5,000, both this year and last year in Eugene. Always a great 3,000-meter runner. He likes to run up towards the front, and he has a very, very good finish. And he's been, yeah, just off the podium the last couple of major global championships. And just for him to compete globally has been a challenge. He is in the United States under DACA, and his story gained traction in 2021 when he had to get special permission just to leave the country to go compete. And I'm glad they let him go because he's now one of the top athletes on the global circuit. Absolutely. One of the best 5,000 meter runners in the world. And look, Paul, Inga Britson right behind the pacemakers. Doesn't look like he's very tired from that near world record yesterday in the mile. He likes to just be in that slipstream, stay behind them and ride that rail, especially on the backstretch here at Hayward. I did notice the flags are moving a little bit more now than they were in that women's 5,000. So they're probably feeling a little bit of win there. And now Bekele is going to make this a race early as they'll come to the line. Inga Britson says, thank you very much. I'll go to the inside. Kajelcha now in third as they go 629 with a lap to go. This is pretty incredible, Paul, and what a testament to the, the strength that Inga Britson has in his training to be able to come back today. But this race is not over yet, and we see Grant Fisher hanging in there. He needs about a 58-second lap to scare his American record, and I think there's a good chance we're going to see that. He's back there in six, trying to stay in contact. Inga Britson bringing him down to the tower. 200 to go, and here goes Kajelcha. Kajelta's trying to go, but Ingebrigtsen is holding him wide. He will not let him take a step in. We're going to have a fantastic final 100 here. That's Salomon Borrego, who was the Olympic champion in Tokyo at 10,000 meters. But now it's a two-man race. Ingebrigtsen and Kajelta. Grant Fisher trying to get third as Ingebrigtsen looks next to him. And the lean at the line. 7:23:64. It is a photo finish, as you can see there on the screen, as we await confirmation of the win. As Ingebrigtsen is the winner. 7:23:63. New meet record. New European record. New Diamond League record. And oh, by the way. A second Diamond League title for him this weekend. What a race. That was an awesome race, and what a finish. Both men fighting all the way through the line. I wasn't sure who had that. It was so, so close. But I do also want to point out that we got a new American record out of Grant Fisher. 725-47, back in third place. He really came through in that final 100, but wow. That was a great, great race. You know, Paul, I keep saying it, but it's true. Distance running is so draining emotionally and physically. The training you put into it, usually late in the season, we're tired. The times aren't that fast. The competition is still good, but the times aren't that fast. So what we're seeing here is truly, truly special. 
So after this lap of victory, Jakob Ingebrigtsen turns his attention to the offseason and big moment coming up next week as he goes back to Norway and gets married. And that is what one hundredth of a second looks like as they cross the line. The cameras do not lie. That a finish fitting of a sprint race and that what it was it was in that last 400 meters the third fastest 3000 of all time as we take a look here at this last fabulous finish on the Xfinity 10 G fly cam. Jelta looked like he had timed it perfectly. He moved out around the bend, swung a little wide, and you thought he was going to get there, but Ingebrigtsen saw him and just found a little bit more, both dipping at the tape. Like you said, we don't see that very often in distance racing, but they both really dipped there and went for it. Ingebrigtsen falling because he dipped so much, but it got him the win. Well, Jakob, on day one of these uh, Diamond League finals, you ran the third fastest time ever in the Bowerman Mile. How do you double back the next day and do what you did here in the 3,000? I was definitely uh, a little bit tired from yesterday, but uh, but that's uh, that's probably the good thing about being in uh, in a good shape that you recover faster. So I was not as uh, I was not as tired as I was, as I was fearing, but uh, no, it was good. There's a opportunity for athletes to realize that they're in a special window in their lives, in their performance lives, and you seem to be in one. So how do you continue? To, oh, you don't think so? I wouldn't say so. Why not? I'm just getting started. There's not a win, though. There's, uh, but uh, but at the same time, uh, as in what you're saying, there's some some sense in that uh, you can take anything for granted, and uh, there's no guarantee that I'm here next year, and especially not in this type of shape. But uh, of course, I believe that I can still uh, improve and run faster in the future. But I'm gonna race as much as possible when I have the chance, and. Uh, are going to take those opportunities to, to try to win. Yeah, and that's what I mean, because Paris is the next big opportunity for the next big stage. How much are you looking forward to that? A lot. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm looking forward to every competition. Uh, this is why I'm in this sport, is to compete. I'm not here to, to save myself for uh, the bigger events. I'm going to be here in every race, in every championship, in, every, in everything. And I'm going to try to win as much as possible, and that's, that's why I'm here. And there's, a, there's a big difference between you know athlete to athlete, but for me, it's it's all about the competition. Awesome. We love seeing it. Thanks, and we'll see you next season. Appreciate it.